before we started, but I was trying to ask y'all about like what people perceive you to be versus like who we actually are. Because I feel like a lot of people, you see people in the street and they see you like, oh, I know you drink or I know you smoke, things like that. Just because Somebody like- at the event the other day. Yeah, like, like, the, like just because it got a positive image, like shit. Like, it was like, I didn't think you drank. I was like, dude, you don't know me. I was like, yo, we've never- I didn't think you didn't drink. <laughs> 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 you know, shit is there, Yo, when I met this nigga, man, when I, yo, when I met this nigga, this nigga, when I met you, we met taking pictures and for all these artists in Baltimore. And Aaron was like, yeah, y'all left the NFL to like make sure, you know, I wanted to take care of my body. I was being broke up and it was, you know, it can damage you, right? So I left the NFL to be healthy. And then he'll say that and then they get quiet. Then he'll dig in your bed. It's a Sunday morning. And like, <laughs> and he's digging his bag and pull out a big ass fit. <laughs> Yo, that's when Daddy was like, nigga, you left the NFL to be healthy? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah. No, I get that all the time. Yo, but it fucked me up when I got older and like I started going to schools and shit and I'm. Like being friends with teachers and realize that yo, hella teachers do hella fucking drugs. Cause niggas is like, regular, like, like we. I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm not even. Teachers, like a teacher. Yo, I'm low on the spectrum compared to the teacher stories that I didn't heard. Like, I'm a teacher. Tell me these stories. Huh? I feel like you know something. Yo, I feel like you should be I'm telling us these stuff stories. On camera, cause I'm a teacher too. I don't want, I don't want right, to get back next year and, then, and they be tripping. Well, like, shit, my nigga <laughs> need another drink or something. Like, cause I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Look, I mean, at the end of the day, I say it like this: it's. With any with any profession, job, whatever, it's trauma associated with it. It's negative aspects like associated with it that some people try to medicate away through different different vices. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm just one of the people where I don't look at. I know what my vices are, and you know what I'm saying. Like, I'm aware of them, and you know, I try to make sure that nothing that I'm ever doing is like controlling me. But like, some that people don't have. Yeah, some people don't have that kind of filter. You know what I'm saying? Like they. They really like, they need something to take their mind off of what they deal with on a day to day basis. I feel like if you helping other people and you living the best life that you can live, and you know what I'm saying? Like you're being <laughs> Your like, best life. Like you being unapologetic, like you just being something, you helping people, then I feel like it don't matter what the fuck you do when you're not around the people that you're helping. You know what I'm saying? Like even our parents or whoever in our lives, like we'll see them as heroes. And like Cole said, he said you climb out with the flagpole just to find out that your heroes are some assholes. Mm. And you really don't realize that these people, regular people, because you see them as a authority figure or a guy. And then you see them, you're like, okay, they've been functioning their entire life while still doing this and dealing with that and going through whatever. You feel me? So, yeah, here's an, here's an idea. How country is it to think that a person can only do things based on what their job description is? Like, oh my right. God, he's a cop. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's not a dip in the opioids. Like, right. yo, like people are multi layered, people are multi dimensional. Um, nobody's just one thing. So, you know, your favorite. How many niggas? How many niggas? Favorite, you know, how many niggas you know that go to church? They sell dope. Yeah, well, look, your, your favorite. I mean, your favorite rapper. Your, your favorite fight. rapper might rap about lean. He might rap about fucking with a lot of girls. He might be in a monogamous relationship, a vegan, and wouldn't even touch a drug. But you want to know because it's all an image and what somebody's trying to sell. So, like, yeah. If you're in grade school, no, your teacher's probably going home to get fucked. Then when she's finished, she's going to roll a blunt, she's going to smoke it, and then she's going to pass it to the student and then see who just came up out of it. But not, wow. not this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a metal teacher, so I can't. I've been to high school. I've been to high school. Like, high school. Like, Straight facts. Are facts. I'm saying when I went to high school. You're a high school teacher. Yeah. When I was in high school and you was in the 12th grade and, or 11th grade and your car was nice enough, there was a teacher that fucking with a teacher. And and I, I did. I did not want to. I've actually been trying to do it, but you might. But you might, might right? Yeah. I mean, if you were single, you never know. Uh, I'm straight. Mm-hmm. I'm good. Love, enjoy. But yeah, <laughs> what I, I got, got, love, I got some young niggas that crack some pieces. Those are all I'm saying. But the, to go back to your actual question, though, like this is the first time me and Brandy are like sharing space for real. But like, um, I would think that the reason that like me, Connie. The like, and I don't even share, you and I all like, space. I don't feel like I'm, I hate that word. I don't I feel like I'm cool you. with. Yes, you do. <laughs> I don't share space. When you're around white people, <laughs> God, I, I've heard you say it before. So, <laughs> you didn't say it before. All right, you want to put something on that? You need a lot of space. You want to put something on that? Yeah, I'm about to say because yes. one of those events got bad. I don't share One of those events got filmed. So, um, one of the reasons I feel like, um, we're all not even just cool, but like we kind of are on the same wavelength is because none of us really put ourselves up on pedestal. Right. You know what I mean? Like other people do that, but we understand like, yo, we're just navigating our way through this, through this life the same way as everybody else. Like the fact that we're trying to 
um, bring about certain changes and all that kind of stuff. Like while some people might consider that admirable, it doesn't necessarily make it like it doesn't make us special. Like we still deal with the same issues that everybody else deals with, and sometimes we but don't I necessarily think, deal with it in the best way. I think that's the thin line, though, because because we're what's the word you said? Admirable. How you say it? Admirable. admirable. Yeah. There you go. Amaria, but whatever. Same thing. <laughs> you feel me? You feel me? Like, I'm going to say it's Shana, I know how to say. But anyway, because we're in that light, I feel like certain people look at us on a pedestal, even if we're not, even if we don't place ourselves on that pedestal. Mm-hmm. So I will come out with a little party or things like that, and they can be like, oh my God, I can't believe it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like there's a thin line between. We need to kill that, though. How do we kill it? By actually, like, not just well, a fucking book or just like observing more than what the fuck motherfuckers told you to believe in life. How do we feel that though? Because no, well, I mean, we we are the examples of that. Like, case in point, yesterday I was at um, my cousin Q did this um, did this food festival. Yeah, Q. Um, yeah. Um, <coughs> now, Charles, Taste this. I got yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Him and Craig, him and Craig did a, a food festival, right? Now, most of my cousin's events, like at lunch, they're not on a day that I got some other stuff going on in the morning. I'll try to get to just to show support because we've been rocking together forever. I'll go to his stuff and because I don't usually, I'm not out on the scene like that, guarantee every event of his that I go to, somebody's going to come up to me and be like, yo, you ain't never out. Like, you know what I mean? What you doing here? And the whole deal is, yo, you can do both. You know, now I'm, no, I'm not going to be out every night. I'm not going to be out in all the spots there is to be at. But like, yo, to act like because you're trying to bring about certain changes that you can't have a good time, that you can't be yourself, that you can't, you know what I mean? Like, like enjoy life in a way that we have the right to enjoy it is stupid. No, that's a fact. Con- Yo, I was about to say, you smoking something? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, <laughs> you, that's how you do your head. Yo, I see. I forgot he had that. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is he doing? There was, was nothing coming out. I don't know why you do I see. There was nothing coming out. I see your eyes cut over. No, it was off. I didn't mean to cut it off. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Yo, no, I'm rushing I was real life, oh, like real life, real time story, right? Real shit. And I know this is how people going outside of the traditional context or whatever it is they doing, whatever mode they trying to fit. I graduated Virginia okay. State in 2015, and I graduated. I swear to God, on graduation day, I was drunk as a bitch from the night before, and I said, "Yo, I'm never going back to college. I don't care about college. I'm gonna make my own way." Yada yada yada. Come home, so I'm 15, back to Baltimore, boom, got a book, I'm doing show, I'm doing hella shit, really still hot, and people are like, oh, you should teach, you should teach, you should teach, right. you should work at a school, you should teach, you teach, I'm like, yo, I'm not trying to teach, and I'm randomly on a breakfast club one day, right, and I see this interview with this nigga named MK Asante, oh, who the fuck is this nigga, so I watched the interview, and he was like the first youngest tenure professor in America, yo, teaching at Morgan right now, he got books out, and he's a professor. Professor and oh, this nigga a professor dressing with your hat like this, like what the fuck? I never seen no professor like that at, at Virginia State. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Where the fuck that nigga's at? So that was the first time that like caught my eye of seeing somebody outside of that, you know, hegemonic idea, like what a professor looked like. Mm-hmm. So I run into this nigga, right? And I I read some of these shit before, but I never knew your face. I just read a book before. So I meet Cho and shit. We get cool. And I realized that you're a professor, you're an author, yeah, and I had two years later, this become my best friend, and I'm just like, yo, what the fuck, yo, like, you can really be who you want to be in no matter what station you're in. I done been at tables with him with us two and 50 white motherfuckers, and we done been at fucking bars down the projects, you get what I'm saying? We done fucking been just chilling with all niggas, like, we done did so much shit, and he's a professor, he's a thinker, he's an intellectual, and... I just finished my first year of grad school because I saw somebody that was a reflection of me and the people that come from where I come from, they still dress like how, the, you know, the people dress from my neighborhood, they still talk like how the people that talk from my neighborhood, two books out in New York Times, best selling TV shit, you name it, yo, they done it. So I'm like, okay, I don't got to throw on a suit and tie on every day if I don't want to. You didn't see that I don't, until college? Hmm? You didn't see that until college? I ain't No, this was, I mean, this, was, this, was, this was, this was, this was, this was. I'm not saying, I ain't see that. I teach, for, I think, like, to expose students to narratives other than the stereotypes they see. But mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just saying, you said you, you met him when you were in college, prior to college. No, I met him after I was in college. I graduated in 2015 and I met him. That's when She's I saying you ain't see that going into college, like coming from out of high school. Yeah, but like that was something you hadn't been exposed to before. Right. No, like everybody that I ever read, some everybody was on his school. Now, facts. I'm about to say, I, ain't, I wasn't exposed to every, every book that I ever read, it was never a nigga that looked or dressed like me. 
Every person that came to my school for career day was never a nigga that looked, dressed, and talked like me. It might be a nigga from fucking, uh, fucking Alaska. You know what I'm saying? Like, they grew up in like a good home. They wear like, like, I never seen nobody that looked, talked, walked, and shared the same ideas as me. Never saw that until I physically, a visual representation of MK Sante on a computer screen. And that's what it turned out. Like, oh shit, this nigga a professor in my city? How I don't know, yo? How you look just like me? How you dress like me? Then I become friends with somebody who's doing these things. You know what I'm saying? And it's, then I was like, okay, if you can do it, I can do it too. I don't. Shout out to MK and B. Like, like, real talk, like, I, as you were saying that, I'm thinking, and when you talk about, like, the contemporary is the wrong word. When you talk about the new age, you know what I mean, authors and the new age, like, critical thinkers that really kind of usher in this younger generation, like, especially in this city, I feel like that's so important because even when, that like, I put all of y'all on that pedestal, when I give... <laughs> My students, your book. When I give them Dee's book, when I give them Hannah Sawyer's book, when I give them my book, they're actually seeing content that is written by people that look like them, that talk like them, that dress like them, that come from the same streets and that, that they come from. Them. Like that yeah. can actually be in the same spaces. Why we so on that? Though? There's a reason why if you give a kid, you know, Huckleberry Finn, you know, from Baltimore. He's probably not going to see him, his or herself in that text. Mm -hmm. But if you give them, you know what I mean, the B-side or raw wounds or, you know what I mean, art activism or for girls growing into their hips, like they understand a lot of what they're reading because it's a reflection of themselves. Why are we on that, though? Because all of y'all wrote books, right? You're, You're writing one right now. Right? Yeah, yeah. What was the, I guess, I don't want to just ask you like interview questions, but I, I really want to know, like, what was what made you first start wanting to write a book? Like, what made you even so start? My shit real short. My shit real short. I was always just obsessed with the idea. He just took of, over his. He's no, no. He was no, first. I, I feel like he went. I want you. I want you to really elaborate. Like, I really want you to get time over. But that's what I'm gonna say. I was just so obsessed with the ideas that books can be a physical piece of art that can be here for a legit hundred years, two hundred years. And in my mind, I always say, "Yo, I want to be here longer than." You with my physical body does. So a nigga be like, oh, I got this book from 2015. And it's fucking 3,035. Like, who knows? That's you. Oh. Uh, yeah, my bad. So I actually decided to write books because I just felt like everything, you know, I wasn't a, I wasn't a reader growing up. I didn't become a reader until I was well into my 20s. I didn't read anything. What's well into your 20s? I didn't become a reader until I turned, like, at least, like, maybe 27 years. Oh, all right, all right. I, like, I, didn't, sure. not, I didn't read nothing. <laughs> Part of that 32 years. Yeah. Now, I'm on you. I'm on you. I'm no, on that level. I, mean, I, like, like, so I didn't, right. at the time, I didn't think I had to read. I mean, it's important. No, at the time, I didn't think I, I didn't think I had, I didn't think I had to read because I've sold plenty of drugs and made plenty of money and been plenty of places and um, had, you know, a pretty solid life for a young person. Um, so I didn't, I didn't understand how I was damaging myself by not being a critical thinker and not thinking critically and not gaining those skills that you need from reading. So um, what I will say is when I started reading, um, the first book was um, A Coldest Winter Ever by Sister Soldier. And then that mm -hmm. spiraled into me reading like, you know, clockers and, and other contemporary books that touched on that subject matter to me, wanting to know about the beat poets and James Baldwin and Maya Angelou and all of these people to me reading foreign writers like Theodore Dostoevsky and stuff like that. So it kind of spiraled into me constructing that. But what I will say is in that journey, I read a lot of articles, and um, I'm a history person, like, just in general. Like, I've, I've always had an interest in what happened before I was here. So, as a history person, I'm reading the articles, and I understand that a lot of history comes from um, newspapers, which I consider to be primary resources. And I'm reading these newspapers about what's happened in the East Baltimore. And we, you know, at the time, um, I'm spending a lot of time with the Chapel Hill projects got torn out, the Somerset Housing Projects, and then I'm up and down the hill all the time. And I'm reading stories about these places, and I'm like, yo, this reporter's a liar. He never, ever walked on his block. That man don't talk like that. People don't say shit like that. That's not the vernacular or the colloquialisms that this neighborhood uses. So you people are lying. You're liars. So um, I wanted to throw my hat in the ring, and I wanted to start writing my own stuff. And um, and it worked out because, um, I mean, shit, we donated over 10,000 books to schools all over. No, 15,000 books to schools all over America. I've been to, like, 200 schools in the last... Um, over 200 schools in the last three years, and um, the kids are really adapting to the work and they're loving it, and I'm getting to connect with them, and that's not even my main job, so it's cool. It's just like something I do on the side.
No, I lit. I heard. I might who said George that like um the Father's Day event. Yeah, yeah. So um with me, it's it's kind of similar to to both D and Connie's stories. Like um I saw myself writing a book, a book later on in life, you know, when I was growing up. Um just kind of because I figured that fit into the overall narrative of what I wanted. I saw myself as being like a famous athlete, you know what I mean? And then doing my artwork after I got done. And You living a dream for real, bro. Nah, I, I'm dead serious about that shit. Every, every, I've been intentional about my goals my entire life. and Everything I've ever literally set out to do and told everybody this is what I'm going to do, I'm living it right now. So, right. you know, when I said I was going to play in the NFL, I did that. You know, when I said I was going to do my thing as an artist, I'm doing that. And I said, you know, I didn't necessarily see my capacity being as a teacher, but I said, I'm going to serve and I'm going to give, you know what I mean, in my community. I've been doing that my entire career. You know, so with my artwork, um, I've always been so passionate about that. And I always wanted that to represent who I am, not what I did as an athlete, not what people thought my story was, but the artwork that I created with my own hands. And um, just going through that time after I, um, after I retired and started doing my artwork full time, um, and all of this stuff is going on in the space of social justice and um, police brutality and you know the inequities that exist economically in our communities and all that kind of stuff. And I would notice the work that I was doing and the work that my peers were doing, you know, everybody that I'm surrounded by right now today, everybody that I work with on a daily basis. And I'm saying, like, I don't feel like when the actual, like when the Harlem Renaissance was going on, that the people that were a part of that movement knew in real time how impactful that movement would be later on. Right. Me growing up here in Baltimore and knowing how um, how we're viewed, how our city is perceived, and knowing that, like, even during my time in Penn State or in the NFL or, like, whenever I travel, how people perceive our city is so much different than what we are and where we're going, where we're headed, and how art and um, the, the role of artists play a role in it. I'm like, yo, if we're not the ones telling our stories, if I'm not writing a book myself with my art in it, with my narrative in it, then 20, 30, 40 years from now, who's going to tell it from me? Facts. You know what I'm saying? He made me. He made me. My experience was the complete <laughs> opposite, though. So my of everybody? Was, yeah, I, can't, I was always bookworm, and I always loved writing, and I wrote, like, corny poems when I was a child about corny boys, and I what? got to college, and I started performing poetry. And it was just like, oh, this is like the platform. This is where people hear my voice. Because before that, it was just like personal stuff that I was writing about nonsense. Um, and then I had my daughter. And I started doing a bunch of stuff when I had her. She just had me moving and like trying to hustle and do everything. And I had already had like a platform on Instagram. where people were like, oh, you need, a, you need to put this into a book. I'm a, like, this caption, I would just pay for this. And I was like, eh, I don't really know why I'm trying to tell y'all this shit. <laughs> um, but cool, word, thanks. Like... Um, and so it, it, it shifted in me realizing my mom died when I was nine. And I had a fear growing up about like having a child and then not having me in their life. And, and so in college, I started writing letters to like my someday child. Whoever you are, wherever you are, I love you. This is what I've been thinking in my 20s. Because if I had a child, I wanted them to know what my thought process was. I wanted them to know me like through my mouth, even if I wasn't present. And that was just based in fear, right? Mm -hmm. And so then I had my daughter, and I was like, oh, okay, Zora's here. I'm going to bust something out for her. And I had to, like, she's about to be four this month. I said on her first birthday I would have something, and then I, like, I just kept pushing so it. It took Juno Diaz 20 years to write a children's book for his little niece, so you you good. You said what? It took Juno Diaz 20 years to write the book his niece asked him to write when he was, like, four. Oh, well, so you good. So you good. I'll so you good. Yeah. Regardless of the work. But, so, I, um, I said for her first birthday, and then, like, you know, life happens, and I was doing something else. But most recently, um, like, just based on the conversations I've been having with people, I realized that my thing was, like, learning how to nurture myself into womanhood. And feeling like that's a story that happens a lot for a lot of people. It's not always because they lost their mom when they were young. 
and realizing, like I said, like my that whole thought was motivated by fear, but really it's more so like wanting to be able to tell my story and other people to share their stories and the benefits of it, and that kind of like shifted the narrative for like the book that I started working on. Uh-huh. That's it, it. wasn't like oh I had never seen that. I wanted it to. It was just like it was. It was basically cathartic. It was just for me. But then like writing for me, I realized it was for more than me. It's crazy because like growing up, I feel like all of us can relate. Coming from Baltimore, I had a fucked up like like. You said life or love? Life. I had a oh. fucked up life for real. So like my mom's always be like, well my friends be like, you should always, you should, you should write a book. And I be like, mm, I mean, I'll get to it eventually, but I just never thought I was ready to write a book. That's why when I see people like you, I'm like, damn, that's dope. They actually took that stuff. I didn't know I was ready until I was already writing it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I was writing, I was writing poetry and like, essays and yeah. like you know what I'm saying like like little know. little I like I don't know what the fuck like yeah. little paragraphs yeah. of shit like streams of thought yeah. and I realized right around 2015 like yo there's what are you doing with all this mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying what are you writing this for you know what I'm saying well how are you going to put this out and I had to really ask myself some questions is this an article is this uh, an anthology is this a memoir like no, like, you know, but there is a book in this. And then it took two years for me to really, like, right. chop it up and put it together. You know what I'm saying? I didn't release it until November of last year because I didn't want to release it until it was something that I felt like I could be proud of. So, like, you know, that's, it's different for everybody. It's not like everybody just sits out and says, I'm going to write a book. Right. But, like, when you feel like, like something's been placed on your heart, you know what I mean? Like, that is real and that, like, you know what I'm saying? What's what the take out from? No, like, do that shit. It was itching. I thought you did. No, my mom's an itching. I thought you did. I thought you about to play that no. listening. I mean, I made mean, a load, man. I made a load, man. No, let me say this, though, bro. I want to respond to what you said directly. Because Aaron didn't respond to what you said. I want to respond to what you said. I want to respond to what you said. Yo, everybody, was, so yo. I'm going to let it run. Yo, I'm going to let it run. What's that? Henny get the kick in there. I'm going to let it run. What neighborhood you grew up in? McCullough Homes. McCullough Homes. Mm-hmm. All right, bet. So check this out. You from McCullough Homes? Boom. All right, we from down. We from down the hill. I'm I'm from down from like, like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not from down there. <laughs> huh? You was about to say Woodlawn or something? No, I just feel like I just feel like Evanston. Yeah, Evanston. Right. So and you're not from Baltimore, right? From North Carolina. North Carolina, right? So I'm gonna say this. So I don't know what your living situation, living situation was like in North Carolina. I don't know what your living situation was like in the village. What I'm gonna say is this though. Everybody that been through some type of pain, or especially if they come from some type of block, think they can write a book. And there's nothing wrong with that because I believe that every story you matters. You think that everybody thinks they can write a book? No, I'm telling you, I walk up and down the fucking street, and it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like 40 niggas, or they telling me to write a book. Like, yo, you gotta write my shit, or yo, I gotta get my shit out. And the energy and the vibe. I love the energy. I love the idea that you'd be like, yo, he wrote a book so I can write one because that's why I'm so accessible. That's why I might pop up at your rent party. I might pop up at your fucking cookout. I might pop up at your whatever, grand opening. I might pop you. You never even know people see me. I'm still waiting for the both of you. Huh? I need to figure out what your book is about. I'll check in with you. Oh, so this is so what I'm... I'm loving my school and my life. <laughs> I mean, and, it's very easy to get me to your school. Like, because I've been to... Finish your first book. Okay. So what I'm saying is this. You can write a book about growing up rich in some type of suburb, and if that shit is complex and nuanced and layered and it's an ill story, it's going to be better than anybody writing some shit where they didn't really put their heart into it. So going through a lot of stuff, yes, it gives you amazing content, and if you made it through that, it gives you amazing content that can inspire a lot of people, and we need that. But just because we got these crazy stories, it doesn't mean that if we put them down, it's going to be what it could be. So put the energy in a craft. So right. if you like, say, yo, I want to write a book, read some ill memoirs, read some stuff that you like, identify what your style is, what you like what, and then figure out how to pin that story the best way it can be pinned because you're representing yourself and your family and your struggles and what you came over other than like, and I'm telling you this, like that's I said, a, that's I feel I'm in charge of some shit that you never did before you don't like to do. I listen to rap music. I can manage a rapper. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yo, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's like I be trying to tell my homeboys, I'll be like, yo, I be like, yo, I fuck with your story. I know you've been through some wild ass shit. I was caught up in this shit with you, but at the same time, at the same time, I am still like making money off of my story. I'm still selling my shit to TV. I'm still optioning movie rights to my shit. 
I'm still negoti- in negotiations for my shit. Yeah, so right how the right fuck right. am I going to stop everything I'm doing to tell a story of a nigga that live across the street from me? Right. But guess what? Nigga, you can tell it. Because you're going to tell it in a way that I can't because I ain't live it. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying people be telling people to write books. People just say that because I feel like that's probably all that they know about like. I don't know, but I feel like when people say like, yo, you should write a book, I feel like they just saying some shit like, you need to get your story out to more people. Because like, yo, well, fuck my head up was when I saw this interview with Kendrick Lamar and somebody asked yo, how uh, do you read? He said, yo, I don't even read that much. I don't even read like that. And me from the outside looking at nothing, this nigga really like. Yeah, because this is vocabulary, this is lyrics. I'm really, I'm really thinking that you'll read, you get what I'm saying? So I feel like when people say, but that's not him saying that he don't read like the Soros and dictionary yeah, yeah, and all that. Kind of, yeah, yeah, I'm not saying well, I think a lot is yeah, a little yeah. bit of some else's writer. Yeah. But what I'm what I'm saying is, when people say write a book, because I don't have motherfuckers tell me write a book about something that don't even fucking read. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe like, oh, can you write my story? People say that shit when I buy my neighborhood. Oh, remember Miss Rita that died from the so and so? You know she went there. Yo, you should write her book. And I'm just like, yo, like or the article. And I write her. Like, book. Yo, if I write her book, is you gonna read it? And I got to do this person. And I got to do this person. And I got to do so much shit to look, to look for, the research. That come with a lot of shit. And I'm just like, yo, that's crazy. So it's like I feel like when people say that, it's just on some yo, just get this story out here. More people need to hear that. I fuck with that. I see but I want you to shit. write it. I want you to write it. I, I pray that you write, I, I, write it. You feel me? I hope yeah. you write it. I hope you write it. But I'm saying that it's the same way the energy you put into your radio, the same energy you nah, put in the host is the same, same energy. It's not just going down. And fuck these double eggs up for us real quick. I know. I get what y'all saying. It, it definitely yeah, makes perfect sense. Don't just do it. Just do it. Don't try to put something out in a couple months thinking that it's going to be gold. I see somebody write a book. Take some time. And that shit was like, just like, but... It's a, a lot of shitty books in the world. What I will say is the person I seen write a book, he wrote the book. It wasn't the best, but it did. I think it inspired a different type audience. Like, you know, you might know him tomorrow. He's the bros, whatever. Uh, one of the one of the bros. He wrote a book. He's from the hood. He's from don't Park Heights. <laughs> I mean, it's my nigga. You know, you know, His name's Jamal. No, no. no. Uh, I don't know, but I was like, <laughs> that's my no. I kind of see how you say the book wasn't good. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. He wrote a book, right? I ain't and, you, but I know you. Oh well, I, so Jamal, he from, he's from he from the hood, the slums. Mm-hmm. So like, what happened? But he still was in the hood. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Matter of fact, free Jamal. He, he arrested now, but he wrote a book, and like he's still in the hood every day. You get what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And the book might not have been the best book, but the fact that he could reach the audience that probably most of us in this room can't reach because we just not there every day. Yeah. That right there was inspiration. Like, so, what's somebody tell you, man, I don't remember who it was, where it was that, but somebody was like, um. Yo, they want to write about something or saying that you should write about something because, like, you talk about the same shit so much or, or some shit they were saying, yo. One day, it was, was what it, the fuck is this? Is that y'all smoking? <laughs> is this hookah? Right, so, um, oh, so, so, so basically, when you write out, I can, you basically write out and do whatever I want. You was like, yo, if I want to write something about real hood today, it was that shit must be good. Enough. It was, yo, enough to write some fucking. It was a reporter. Shit, it was right. a reporter that I ended up writing a letter of recommendation for to get a new job. So, this reporter hit me up one day and was like, and I only published like two essays, but he was like, I love your writing style so much. It's so colorful and funny. You just play the language in a way I've never seen it before. But if you want to have a career as a journalist, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to learn how to write about other stuff outside of the streets where you come from. So I had him, I don't know if I had him back or not. In my mind, I said, I can be like Jeezy if I want to. I can write about the streets for 60 yeah, years. Exactly. So like, nobody pushing <laughs> T, nobody that. can. But... Got you know, but I only published two essays. You don't know me, dog. Like I've done extensive research on all types of shit that just never made it to print or never made it to an article. Like people know me as a person who writes books. They don't know I work in television. They don't know I wrote race segments for different shows. Shit that you and your grandmother probably watch. Like being black in Baltimore. It's just like I wrote these shit. So it's like it's not like a. It's just one component, and it goes back to your initial question when you're talking about what people per- would perceive you as, and um. And back to Brandy was saying, it's like, as far as going to schools, that's why I, I like I try my best. Like I take pride in the amount of high schools and middle schools and youth presence that I visit because um, and the ones that I've been, the ones that I've been to, and the ones that I plan on going to because it's like people really, really need to get a chance to sit down with somebody who's wrote for ESPN, with somebody who's wrote for New York Times and Rolling Stone and put books out and all of this stuff. They they really need we need these people in our proximity because like Connie said, when you see it. You know, it looks more real and you can do it. And I feel like, you know, even like with me, with Aaron, um, with Brandy, like us just knowing each other, us knowing each other, like 
Connie is more likely to put a book out because he's connected or he knows or he sees a lot of people in his group that put a book out. So it makes it different. You have more confidence to write a book because you know I'm sitting right here. I can be like, Jay Hill, this is how you get an agent. This is how you agent your fucking agent. This is how you fire a monkey ass when they acting silly. This is how you act when you go in a publishing company. This is what you write. This is what you talk about. These are the key things you pay attention to when you're trying to get to it. I can't. I'm a, so and I'm, a phone, I'm a phone call away, bro. I fucking live around the corner from you. I'm mm -hmm. a phone call away. So it's like you'd be more likely to not just put out a project because you see people that did it, but then you know people that can fucking connect you to success. Right. And that and that's the that's the new shit. That's the shit that we that we that, that we didn't a lot of us didn't have coming up. Right. That's what we try to do right now. We need motherfuckers to grandfather us in this shit. When you look at Baltimore rappers and be like, damn yo, how come Baltimore never had like a beanie seagull type or a person that you know what I mean? And it's because the older rappers in Baltimore who didn't make it, they didn't take the time to try to school some of the younger people on shit they should know about the industry. So there's no grandfathering system. So these little niggas got, you got your man trying to manage you from, you from, you from over the trove and your man from over fucking White Lock trying to manage you. Your man ain't never been on White Lock. Right. How the fuck is he going to talk to a record label or somewhere about getting you some, how the fuck do you even know what a contract look like? He ain't Google the shit. He's going off the city scene in the documentary. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we got to make them connections and we got to be those people and then we got to stay connected with these people so we can actually continue to thrive and build community. But do you think like, so we talk about a lot of this in the uh, music industry and entertainment industry. I feel like a lot of people are so keen on getting themselves out that they, they not really worried about building. They, they but why are we so worried about getting out? No, no, no. But not even getting out, just being successful, like quote unquote being successful, right? So many people are problem. only worried about this themselves. Shit is this shit nah, this fact, shit. I feel like so many people are worried about themselves that they're not trying to grandfather, as the D would say, somebody in or reach out to uh, a Aaron that's doing something or, or Connie or Brandy like, yo, let's link up because they just worried about themselves. Is, do y'all think that's the case? But nigga, and this, I one thing you can go like the shit like lift as you climb. Nigga, like, nah, that's and we you know that. that you don't lose nothing though, right? Like, but even we know that, that. Even that though, like I swear to God, like when I met D and D did shit for me, like I got on TV because of this man. I done this shit at the book festival because of this man. Like I got, and he's still like, I got, yo, too. yo, I got, yo, I got people in my contact that like edit that fucking editing and work on Tupac book. You get what I'm saying? Like, I got people in my all off of me. And yo, from yo looking down, okay, I'm about to help this little nigga. Right. And now how I transpire, like I say, I'm in school now because of your influence. And now my little man, Scott Thompson, that fucking go to the bottom of School of the Arts, now I bring him to the book festival with me when I got invited. If I'm having an event, I bring yo out to perform. And, and he's still that nigga. And, and, and Scott's still school. that nigga. And, and everybody's still school. that nigga. Nah, right. He's in high school. And, and Scott doing shit, he's doing plays, he's in theater. These are signing this third book there. I'm still doing my shit. And we all helping each other. Nice D-Name D -name on my book is more visible than it is my name. Mm -hmm. Real shit. On, on Raw Moves, you can look at the cover. Like, your name is just as big as my name. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's how you look out. And even if you go on Amazon and you type in D-Book, my book, Iron Book, Denim Book, oh, and you type in one, all of them should pop in as a suggestion. <laughs> oh, all of them are these two. Package. You know nah, what I'm saying? I was just which trying to say that. Like, which we need your book on, so. <laughs> it's like, if that's not what's common in the community. Yeah, like, period. That's called nepotism. Yeah, but, we're making, it, but we're making it common. Yo, but I think it's common, though. I think niggas don't be. Yo, motherfuckers don't be grateful, yo, because I'm telling like, where I come from. So you yo, think it's common? Yo, where I come from, nigga, if I got tw if I got a dollar, if I got, what the nigga Ali Capone say, if I got one more buck on my plate and it's me and bro in the store, we both gonna get 50 cent cakes. Like, we ain't play that shit. It's like niggas who, so when I talk about the grandfather and shit, I'm saying to the art world. I'm not talking about the streets. Shit, if I'm down bad and you good, you know what I'm saying? Then you got me and I know I got you on the cover out and that's it. When I, I don't, think, out, I don't that's think that's like, like I mean, that's what, I mean, I'm saying, that's what I mean. Let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. I'm saying that's the street. I'm talking about in the art world, it'd be like some 45 year old rappers that would be like, yo, all these young rappers trash. I don't really mess with them. Said. And I'm saying, yes, I agree. So, yeah, that's what, what I'm saying. saying. No, that's what I was saying. That's but what I'm even, saying. Even in the streets, I don't I think it's like, like that no more. And that's your friend. That was my That was my experience. That was my experience. I got you, You know what else is my experience, though? When we was coming up, I don't know how old you are, but. When, when I was <clears throat> when I was coming up, right? <laughs> we talking about we talking about and that our experience, our experience, right? When I was coming up, you know what else was in my experience that's not in this experience? All the drug dealers told me to stay in school and play football. Mm -hmm. I don't think I, I don't know because I'm not in the, like in the streets anymore. But it can't be like these motherfuckers can't be 
Telling these little kids. No, back then they told every little hold kid up, to stay out the street. Yeah, yeah like they told. But now, no, no, no. But now they only tell the kids that's nice. Because they just tell the kids. Yeah, they, but, they tell the kid they can't really play. But, and then he put them in the front. In order to have that conversation, <laughs> you gotta have a conversation about He's most insane. of the OGs like, that were saying that, that, that to you. Give him a pack. Give him a pack. Yeah, so, yeah, so, 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 so who is really supposed to bring them in? So you saying, so you saying the OGs that was bringing me into the yeah, where they at? How many of them are still in the street? Bro, who is the owner of rappers in Baltimore? Who is they though? You don't even know them. They locked up, they did, or they moved away somewhere. My thing, like what I've been trying to get off from the beginning, is this idea that like we've equated success with like getting out of this shit. Mm. Not realizing that there's nowhere to get out. Like, I'm gonna tell y'all niggas right now, there's nowhere to get out to. Move out to the suburbs if you want to. You niggas out there. Move to another state if you want to. You're gonna be a nigga there. Move to another country if you want to. You're gonna be a nigga there. So the idea that we need to be trying to get out of our situation instead of improving but our situation. Really, but it really don't matter is, though because, like, niggas say get out physically, but you don't mean, like, when I was in college, I lost hell of my niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, one man beat got killed. I was in college. I was away, gone. Ah, in college. I'm talking about like, I'm going to move. I'm just saying, my nigga, I was in whole VA three and a half hours away. You know what I'm saying? Or if I'm like in London somewhere, I'm like, okay, I'm here for a week. I'm in LA for a week, two weeks, whatever. You said that to say what? That life is still happening back home? Exactly. And when That's you, what I'm you, 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 She should be like the moderator because she's like. She's like. She probably sit together like, so you mean this? this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, it's, it's, it's no I interview. It's just. It. But no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You got the next question. When you spend your time somewhere and you emotionally and spiritually connected to the shit, it don't matter where the fuck you go physically. I you understand that, but what I was what I was getting at what I was getting at is I'm not dependent on anybody else to fix the neighborhood that I grew up in, except for the people that came from it. You feel me? No, no, no. I'm I wanna I wanna be a part of that change myself. I don't wanna leave and be like, yo, I can donate some money to a rec center here, or I can donate some money. If I don't live there, I'm not paying property taxes there, I'm not shopping there, I'm not Actually, around every day for the kids and the people in that neighborhood to see me to reach I would out to you. Donate, I would rather you. I would rather you. I would rather you donate me money say, to hit my phone. Say it one more time. I would rather you donate money to me to hit my phone. I rather yeah, yeah. you hit your phone. <laughs> <laughs> I never call you. Just that go over R three. That go over R three. That go over R three. Y'all think about hitting my phone or hitting the cash app? But look, what I was saying. Basic point, I feel like if you really care that much about your hood, then you be the part of that change. Like, so, don't try to look at success as this idea of getting out. So, my question to y'all is, right? I think that's glorified, though. What? Getting out. Make it getting out is glorified. You know, it's funny that's, that she said that, right? Because I seen somebody, Connor, you probably know, you probably heard it. The fact that we talk about this getting out situation. I, um, I heard somebody, he was in high school, and he was saying, uh. Sorry, you feel that. About what? About what? Being crazy. <laughs> Go ahead. You said if we still here after you leave, we uh, y'all niggas crazy. I'm, talking about, I'm not gonna be here, nigga. I'm not talking about you in Baltimore. I'm saying I don't even look for forty or fifty or none of that shit. Like, oh, uh, that's I what I'm saying. Sorry, I thought you meant. I thought you meant. Yeah, I'm sorry about that too. Though. Yeah, <laughs> shit. Be the one of them. Is good. Bro, you say you don't look. Shit, I hope I. Anyway, I mean, don't shoot for that long. I mean, I think that you should just. I got kids. I, I think I, that you I, should, I but I think you should. Just, I think <laughs> no. it's your responsibility to have fun every day. I don't think you should. I don't think you should project death, but I also don't think you should project that you're gonna let it be ninety. I think you should just be. Oh, out. I believe. Have fun. Life. I believe in the manifesting. Have, 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 have fun. fun. Have fun. Have fun with it. I'm having fun and playing. I did way more shit. I ever thought I was gonna do. Coming out of the I said y'all can. I know, but I used to be. I used to be in that dark space right there, but it's like yo. I got. Whole babies and this I shit getting depressing at this point. My it would be better if you say you used to be like that and then you start doing hot yoga. Then I'd be like, damn, hot yoga is good. <laughs> nah, but it like, damn, hot yoga's good. <laughs> nah, hot yoga is good. Like, I ain't suggesting that you go out and like just make a whole bunch of babies just to get a different mindset, but like it's just like I don't mm -hmm. have the luxury to think. I used to think like, yo, I'm lucky if I make it to this age, right? I'm like, nah, like. I can't think like that no more. Like my mother checked out of here when I was six years, uh, six going on seven. Like I can't, you know what I mean? Like I can't, I can't conceptualize what that would be like for my kids. Like you know what I'm saying? Like growing up 
without me or you know anything like else like that. I really used to think like that, but it's like, yo, even if I have a pessimistic view of a situation, like, fuck it, I gotta put that shit out of my mind because that would literally change the way that I move. But I want to go back to the original question, right? I, I, what I want to know is because I'm mainly in the entertainment industry. <laughs> However, I think I like to like have a positive persona. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I like to give back. I like to do all them things. But in the industry, in the in entertainment industry, I feel like a lot of people are for themselves. I'm trying to figure out. I don't want to say y'all industry, but I gotta say y'all industry because I feel like y'all oh, yeah. are I a can part. Speak, I can't speak. Y'all different. I feel like is it like no, that? My brother, I met so many. So my so my job title. Let me say my job title because I think I just want to be clear. My job title is public intellectual. So the universities, the the where I, the magazine I write for, the everything I work on, people pay me to be smart, like to say smart shit that other people don't say. That's what I do for a living. And I'll say that that title, that job title. It's very easy for you to feel like you at this elevated level above other people. And it's all bullshit because a lot of times these people jump on these television shows and they're speaking for other people, but they'll never meet the type of people they're speaking for. Like they'll say something like, oh, I miss Mike Brown. But if Mike Brown was alive, they wouldn't even say that. They would straight cross the street when they saw you. You feel me? So it's all inflated. And then that trickles down to the activism. A lot of activism are starting to dibble and dabble. This is what public, I want to get into. And public, and public intellectualism and... They have these that's ideas, what I want to talk they about. use words like intersection and they use words like safe space and that stupid shit. And they say that, right? And they talk about, oh, I love this and I love that, and you know, and we, you know, black power fist, but they don't know no niggas. They don't be around no niggas. If you're not a rich nigga, a famous nigga, or a nigga that come from a legacy of money, you're not gonna see them in that circle. You might see a motherfucker doing a selfie or the protest or some shit, but all of that shit is fake, it's all a facade, it's not a real thing. Now, the real people that do shit, for the most part, not, I, and there's some activists that do some good shit, and I'm, I, you know, I can, I can sit down and shout them out, but I don't care to, because they don't care, because they don't do this shit to be famous, they do this shit because they really want to help people. So, this is what I want to do. My vibe, my vibe, my vibe, my vibe, my vibe, my way is critical thinking and access to books. That's my lane. My nigga Tone, right. his shit is fitness and, and exercise. And he trained niggas Lord. in the park for free. Tone? No, his oh, name, his name, his name, his name, his name, Positive Tone on Instagram. And what he do is he do some shit called Free Sweat, where he trained fat diabetes motherfuckers and people who can't afford gym memberships in the hood for free. He bring all the equipment to the park and That's he lit. train niggas, right? Then you got Connie, Similar to what I do, go to schools, talk to kids, try to help kids get books, show them, like, be an example of a person that's younger from down the hill, but going to college and eating fucking organic free range <laughs> while fucking drinking craft cocktails. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, like, Aaron does a bunch of different shit, but it's like, it's Aaron like, bands. yo, but it's like, a but, but, you know, and make sure kids, and make sure kids have shit they need, but make sure kids have shit they need, like coats and fucking okay. school supplies and That's tampons fine. and all that shit that niggas can't buy. Man. So I'm saying like, niggas really be having, yo, people really, people really, people really be having proximity. To real people, they have proximity to real people, and a lot of people they get a get a lot of credit for it. They really don't. And one thing I also learned is that you, our job is not to even put as much attention on them. Our job is to do the work, and that's what we do. But look, though, but this what this what hit me right. We in my fucking we on Miami Street found for the Lord Short Doc shit right, and they interviewing the uh, the people who in the barbershop that work there, and they like, how y'all feel about Black Lives Matter? How y'all feel about Black Lives Matter? And they like, yo, what the fuck are you talking about? Nigga. The whole time, their whole life, they've been helping black people. Like, free haircuts, events there. They always keep on your shit. So it's like, that's all they're around is black people. So when you got somebody else that's outside and not even from this country, and they ask you, oh, how you feel about black people? Man, like, bitch, what are you talking about? I've been fucking with black people. Like, I've been looking off a nigga. I bet I ain't not calling the police on niggas to this some wild shit because you don't know if they're gonna blow their motherfucking brain. And that's not, even a, knock, that's that's a, not even a knock. That's not even a knock. That's not even a knock on Black Lives Matter. That's, that's just, just how that's the media be having the media. Up. And they yeah. like, yo, what is you talking about? And I'm like, yo, they been caring about black people before I knew that black people caring about black people was a fucking agenda. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you look out for your niggas. That's, you don't even know no white people. For so real. do you think, but is I wanna touch into that. Is it niggas that's out here being activists because it's cool? Yes, it's yeah. a trend. No, it's a trend. Like, no, 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 no. Let me tell you. No, no. He's asking me. Let me tell you. I'm asking everybody. No, no, no. But this is what I do. I want everybody. No, no, no. That's what I did. So, yo. So, yo. So, I don't know if you... Now, you definitely got to talk this. You, 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 know, you specifically got to talk about this shit. Yeah, I don't, know if you, I don't know if you ever heard of, like, this show called Melissa Hurst Party Show, right? It's a real brilliant lady. It used to come on weekends. It's not on no more. 
But I told you I was gonna give you back. <laughs> yo, 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 uh, yo. Reaches you climb or something? Thank you. Reaches I climb. Lift, lift, lift as you climb. Lift yo, as you climb. I can yo. I ask you? You had two whole bags. Go ahead, go yo, go being an activist is a trend right now. Oh, it's hot. Bad. It's cool. It can get you paid. It can get you recognition. It can get you friends that you might not have. So, like, all I'm saying is that I went on this television show. And when I went on a television show, like, I'm thinking I'm going on there as a professor or as, like, a journalist or author or, you know, whatever one of my 12 jobs is. And I pull up to the show and, you know, I did my little segment and then I leave. And as I'm getting, like, I'm in a ride, I'm in a car ride to the airport coming from the t television station. And I'm looking at the video of the show I was just on in the lower third said activist. And it's like, yo, I never said that. Like, I never told them that. My manager and all four of my publishers never, ever had that in their language for me because I specifically said I don't want to be affiliated with these different people. You feel me? So it's like, that's popping. That's popping. But that's what people want. That's the thing. That's the thing. Oh, no. I'm done. What you was talking about? Nothing. How delicious you thought I'm gonna get your song. That's crazy. Anyway, yo, you got to touch me. You don't want to talk about no, he got to because you know why? I'm gonna say why. I don't know if somebody ever actually. When you made that video, right? On Instagram. What's the video? You're talking about the. When you was reading to the kids. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what was the purpose of that really? Oh, that's real simple. Um, I was texting, I was tweeting about what was going on as soon as I got to school that day. Mm -hmm. Because um, before that, we were, yeah, we were we were on winter break before that. So I'm coming in first day after winter break, you know, and I have an off day every week. So my off day was their first day back. But none, none of the other teachers hit me up and let me know what was going on that, that first day. So when I come in, I'm thinking that everything's cool. Mm -hmm. And... My classroom is, you know what I mean, 35, 40 degrees, and like the whole building is just like in disarray. Like the um, the lights is going on and off, the electricity keeps on going on and out in most rooms. So like, I'm like literally tweeting about what's going on on my um, on my social media, and like an issue that I have a lot and why I try to stay out of like the political aspect of things and it's like whenever you start talking about shit that like in my mind has to do with just basic morality and humanity people will always find a way to turn it into some political shit mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. i mean or oh, it's this person's fault or or it's this person's fault or blame your mayor or like yo like why don't you talk to your governor and that's like oh i don't give a fuck who y'all trying to point a finger at all of us are to blame you know what i'm saying like the fact that like this is not just at my school, but over 50 schools in the city of Baltimore right now are dealing with these issues. Our kids are in situations that are unsafe, and y'all want to turn this into a political issue. So I just thought people couldn't see. It's a difference between seeing it and hearing somebody say it. Like, I could say my kids are cold, but if you see a video of a bunch of kids saying, like, yo, I think I have frostbite, or yo, I'm so cold, like, I can't feel my hands and all that, that like pulls at people's empathy. I get it. So my thing was like, yo, hopefully if all of these people that are talking shit about whose fault it is can see this video, then like it'll go from who to blame to like, yo, what do we do? You know what I mean? How do we how do we how do we do something to help these kids? That's, I feel like you mean no, like, this I, am a, I don't smoke and I'm high as shit. <laughs> what? I don't, if I'm twirling this, I'm doing <laughs> If I'm doing anything uncanny, I'm like she been high. If I'm no, doing, just been talking loud. If I'm doing anything uncanny, you don't be lying. Yo, photo video shot me out. I don't care. Like, <laughs> I'm like she been high the whole time. I just, I haven't had much to say, so I just. Been what is your like? What are so? Down there in front of me. What is? I wish I could make. I'm, what is? I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, what, so what is? I'm over y'all. <laughs> You just leave. You just go away. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. I don't want to nah, talk bro. no more. Yeah. Nah, I don't want to no talk nah, no more. Nah, but you like him back. You like him back. You just do some basic. What's up? You like him back. <laughs> but nah, so what is, I what guess. Some respect on his name. This is not like your lane, I guess. Like, what? Because I feel like you are. You say what's not my lane. What is that? What we talking about? Because you ain't saying anything. Sure. Okay. We were just talking about the school. That's, I, that's what I'm saying. Right. I feel like. And Brandy's defense. It's hard to get a word in what Connie earns. 
Kanye and her talk too yeah. much. Like, I just, I'm letting like, y'all have it. If I feel like it's something for me to I don't say. have no problem. I feel like, so, all right. But, all right, can we just tell them last thing, last thing. Who is Kanye? Because I feel like this is something that you would like to talk about. And I feel like something that get overlooked. Focus. Focus. It's gonna get overlooked. What's that important? Like, I feel like my like SPs and I was looking at it and I, I feel like I people are big on my like SPs, I feel like something that people are some people may be big on, but it gets overlooked a lot, and that's mental health. What about us? I'm actually like, do you think what's the state of being of like not even Baltimore but like the world when it comes to that? Out of, out of, yeah, yeah, like what do you, how do you feel? Do you think people take it important or is it this, is this just a, another thing that's just coming about? I feel like he's talking about perception. Yeah, like, like is it? Because I hear so many people, I, think, I feel I think like. The thing that we're talking about is just like now we have social media. Yeah, I feel like it's a fan. I just feel like so a lot of things. More, well, I mean, I don't think, I, I don't think it should be. I think it's all this hella real. I mean, yeah. why are you doing these yeah. because we act like it's not real, but I think yeah. most things are, are more seen or advocated for now because they are in a public eye. We're like, we used to have the guys or ability to like not acknowledge things because they weren't seen. Like in the same way, like his class got seen because he videotaped it and put it up, right? Right. That didn't like that didn't really exist before the social media era. Yeah. So I just think mental health awareness and now we get to see Kanye falling apart on like TV, you know, and like Kanye even talks openly about like mental health, you know, and so I think the thing is now we're in a space where it. It's on a big screen, and then there are influencers and people who have like you know a large platform saying like, "Hey, this is this is what's going on." So how we how do we make a step forward in all of this though? To sum it up, I think it's just you continue talking about it. Otherwise, like I think that's the only thing that made it real is like you heard somebody who had influence on you making it real. Mm-hmm. It just make it okay because like, even if it. you look at yeah, you know, like even if you look at shit like memes and shit like you might think that you're the only person that think that, and you see and feel like, "Yo, that's crazy." And that bitch got 50,000 retweets and I ain't like, yo, it ain't no way we grew up in the same house. Uh, and I feel like that's the same when you talk about your story. You get what I'm saying? Like, so just the conversation is that step forward. But like, even, like, but even, like, even before I started, like even before I used the word suicide or, you get what I'm saying? Like, or being conscious of what it is, like I thought that shit. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, I just that's just that's, 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 that's what it was for me, for real. I can't speak about... All right, by y'all. So, but I know, like, even I got, I got a book in my crib right now where I legit wrote my first poems and shit. And like, you can see that he bullshit, whatever. But I was, and I was like, I didn't even know that I was thinking that at that time. You get what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even know, but that's obviously what it was. I just want to say I just came from the clinic and I had a, a test, and I don't have any mental illness, any mental illnesses. And I got clean bill of mental health issues. Ladies, but no. Uh, <laughs> like, all right, I'll say this. Um, you're gonna with somebody with chlamydia or bipolar. You have to pick one. <laughs> but you're gonna fuck with somebody with chlamydia or bipolar. I'm gonna ignore that. Bipolar. I'm gonna say. Chlamydia goes away. Chlamydia goes away. Right. Like, yeah, I really don't want to answer that on camera because the answer is fucked up no matter. Yeah. To being like, yo, we all struggle with certain shit, and it's all right to like not be straight. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I to like to go like, get therapy, and like you know, I've just I'm started going back to therapy. I was like, gonna touch on that. I too. tried it. What y'all, once y'all, in what y'all be talking about? Huh? What y'all be talking? Your fucking business. But that's <laughs> the most beautiful thing about it. Because no, nah, like at the end of the day, we'll, we'll talk about shit that I don't feel comfortable talking to other people about. Shit that like like. Is tough for you to unpack because you don't even know, really know what it is yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? Yeah, like, like, and most of us, when we're not able to unpack certain shit, like, it builds up on us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like, it, it, 
kills me to have to get to the point where we're talking about suicide or like, <laughs> you know, something crazy <laughs> before we can acknowledge mental health. Mental health don't need to be so bad to the point where like you're ready to take your own life. It can just be bad to the point where like, yo, you feel off balance or fucked up. And that's all right. I feel like we, like, like we want to project this idea of us being good. All but the when time. you was growing up, though, when you was growing up, though, even though you read about it now, you know about it because you deal with kids. Mm-hmm. But when you was young, how many of your friends did you know was? Oh, I'm depressed. I'm hurt. I'm mad. You know, that's, 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 that's the reason why I say that. That's, like, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Though. So it's like we grow up just like on some shit. Like, oh, everything is everything is cool. Then if you do make it to that certain state, it's like. But think about how we raised. Like, like, think yeah, about how we raised. All right, so I'm a father now, right? Yo, my father and I gave me my first weapon when I was little. Exactly. Like, like yo, know. when I think about my upbringing, I was so trained to be a machine. I was raised to be a machine. Especially in the guy. Yeah, I wasn't raised to be. A person that feels, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, when when in my family, when a boy grows up, we tell that boy, don't feel shit. You know what I mean? Don't it. show emotion. Right. Somebody disrespect you, fuck them up. If you feel like you've been offended, you offend. Like, these are things that we teach. So, like, my thing is now, as you a don't father, see value, You don't see well, value in those skills? Say it again? You, but those skills help you survive and become successful and make it through like well, a But my son... They need a lot of gaps. But my, my thing is, my thing is... I'd rather you have a gap than be homeless. Hold up, hold up, hold up. My thing is, discernment was supposed to come before any of that shit. Straight so sensitivity up. don't work, bro. Discernment, huh? Like not in the world we in. That shit don't work. Say it one more time. Sensitivity. That's bullshit. That shit, that's that's fucking bullshit, yo. That's work. bullshit. And I ain't gonna let you make that fucking it point. Don't and work. Like, that, like, yo, it do. Take that shit. It happens every, every, it it happens happens every, every fucking day in my life. And I ain't gonna what let I'm you talk, make what that What I talk about is that we're supposed to. Because we're supposed to. Sensitivity And I'm separating them. Obviously, I'm separating family and business. All right. But I'm talking. Okay, but obviously. Yeah, but this is. Still me that you talk so you know I'm not I'm not crazy. I'm yeah, separating don't say I'm, separating, will take I'm separating it between family and business. And what I'm saying is that those skills you had, if you talk to be one dimensional, then yeah, it doesn't work. But if you but we're not I'm not gonna sit here and let anybody say that being cold is not needed in certain situations because it's just not true. Some situations you gotta be cold. No, but you're saying that people are taught that, like that's all they taught. Like you're taught to be this, you're taught to be that. I you're wasn't. Taught to not feel. I wasn't taught. And sometimes you don't was, need to feel. It was to a certain point. It was a sometimes you where, don't need to feel. It was a certain point where people set me down and was like, "Yo, you don't know how to do this. You don't know how to show love. You don't know how to receive it, which is worse than not knowing how to show it." Like those are things that literally would have me shackled. Like at this point in my life, so you don't think father, sometimes you shouldn't. Like, you, sometimes you're not supposed to show love. Yo, listen to me. What I'm saying right now. Do you really? So I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to raise young girls and young boy and, and young boys, not knowing how to show love to them. It's a balance. They need to know. No, 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 no. Answer my question. Y'all are making the same point. No, the first thing we really not, not though because y'all he acting like it's one dimensional and it's not. No, I'm not. not. One dimensional, one dimensional, one dimensional is the reason for PC culture. We live it. I'm not going to tell Dave Chappelle, you can't make a certain joke. That's what that shit goes for. Right? Discernment means, like, I got to pick when it's time and when it's not, and I need to be able to recognize that there are varying levels. He said discernment. Which is essentially what you're saying. There's a time when it's okay to be hot, and there's a time when it's okay to he be hot. He said cold. discernment. That's but, why I didn't hear it. No, that's he said discernment. But he didn't say discernment. Right. <laughs> uh, when the hate don't work, they start telling me. Exactly. Lies. So, like, so, yeah. exactly. But like, <laughs> the right boys, right? So I remember last year, one of my students lost his mom, and all everybody said to him was like, "Yo, you good? Yo, you good?" He went. Not. He went. He had basketball game that day. He was like, "Yo, Miss Francis, come to my game." And I, 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 I like rap. Like you get to feel school when I'm a crier. You get to feel something. And then I was the, I was the black mom teacher in the school, going around to all the all the male admin that are like influential in his life and saying like, yo, he gets to feel something. Don't talk him into not feeling. Don't tell him he can't cry. And I think the inner city experience that is the shit y'all get. Like, yo, you gotta be hard. Yo, this is what a man is. And the outline for a man is not somebody that's emotional. Right. It's not somebody that is warm. It's not somebody that's nurturing. And I think you do yourself a disservice when you are learning to operate within that one dimension. So my father was a drug dealer, right? Like through and through, OG, point blank, period. And he said to me, like when my mom died, he said, I can't be your mom. I'm sorry, 
it's my responsibility to put a roof over your head, to, to clothe you, to, you know, I can't do that. And he, and like, and that was his understanding of what a man is. My husband, polar opposite. And I think the people that shape him, my father, into thinking, you can't do this, you, you can't be a nurturer, you can't be affectionate, they did him a disservice. And that's not to say, again, my father, he was a dealer, like, he can handle his shit in the streets, but it took him a long time to learn to be soft with his daughters. Yeah. And in turn, then you get the daughters that want drug dealers. No shade, but shade, you know, like, so then this is the kind of man I want, and that man ain't doing shit for me. He can't, like, assert my wellness. He can't, like, grow me. He can teach me street smarts. And he can teach me business, but like if I'm down bottom and hurt, he gonna look at me down bottom and hurt and be like, yo, bootstrap that shit, let's go. That's not wellness. And I think that's the problem in the black community is like strong black women syndrome. You're supposed to be strong. You're supposed to do it on your own. I'm a Christian, so this is my narrative, but like God didn't create us to operate in one dimension and as ourselves. It takes a village and that shit is cliche and the truth. That's and true. that's not one dimensional. I just wanna finish it <laughs> no. off with this. Like my my beef with what he was saying was you being able to feel and knowing when to put your feet down and stand toe to toe isn't one dimension. That's multi-dimensional. Yeah, but I want to being able to understand that being a man is not just being hard. It's not just you know. It's discernment, which is knowing when to knock a nigga out and when to sit down and say, "Yo, like this." But is I want to. I want to. Hold on. 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 She heard. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So what I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to tell you that because, crazy. and maybe all of us, hey yo, hey yo, hold up, please, please, wait, 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 please, this is all I'm saying, I'm done, imagine, imagine, you going to sleep early, and you get your 10 hours of rest. And you go to where that nigga knock you out. <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> All right, hold up, hold up. Edit that out. Now, on, on, on the stage, what are you talking about? <laughs> on, on, on the stage, listen. You get your whole eight hours of sleep, the nigga straight knock you out, boom, you sleep for a little bit. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. You been asleep up. On the stage, no. 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 On a serious note, though, nah, because you like, nah, for the, let's not fuck it up, because this, 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 this is what matter. And I feel like all of us men here can attest to that. Because I feel like I'm the same way. Like, I ain't gonna lie, even my girl, yeah. if anything, with something going on, if if something happens, I'm like, yo, listen, we black. I, 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 I'm not even gonna say, I, I, um, <clears throat> I don't know the word with it, but I don't. I don't associate that with being men. I think I associate it with being black, right? So like, what? I'm about to get into it. So when when I see when something's going wrong, I believe because I'm an African American, we were built to overcome. You know what I'm saying? So and what you said, I feel like sometimes my feelings like that, it 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 takes away from. It is okay to feel away. You know what I'm saying? However, because I believe that, yo, you know what? You like, don't think that can coexist? <clears throat> that's what I'm trying to ask you. Like, but I feel like it's a thin line with everything. Because if something goes wrong with me, my family, my girl, my whatever, I'm like, yo, listen, you gonna be good. Just wipe your sweat off. You know oh, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, for sure. Well, see, so, okay, but what I you say, it kind of, it kind of like. No, okay. So, right, me, wherever I am, God is, and all is well. So mm-hmm. I can be doing bad, but God is with me. Ultimately, I'm good. You can know that you're going to be good. good. <laughs> that don't mean I'm not hurt, so I'm yeah. my So what's the difference between what your, father, yeah. what your father was saying? Because what he said is, I cannot acknowledge or respond to your emotions because I am a man. That's what he said to me. I cannot be your mother. I cannot nurture. How did you feel, How did you feel about, about that statement? I was suicidal. What? I was laying down on the floor of my church crying. Her calling somebody. Like, somebody else cared because my daddy can't do it. Her. And so... But do you think that's what he meant, that he didn't care? I, did, I didn't say... I, I, my father definitely... I'm a daddy's girl. He's mm-hmm. gonna hold me down now. If I called and said, like, I need some materialistic shit... He definitely cared. He he's gonna did, show up. He I don't definitely care. He just didn't I'm know saying, how to respond to the Right, emotions. exactly. He, him being... Him caring is not for question. He cares. Infinity and beyond. But his ability to respond to emotion does not exist. So it, on the flip, right? I, I moved to Carolina when I was 12. I was in Virginia Beach and, like, poor in a single mom home. Up until then, once I was 12, I moved in with my dad. He was a drug dealer. We was living great. Prior to that, though, if I called him crying about something, he'd say, like, yo, I can't understand you, and I, like, I can't do it. Call me back when you're done. 
you know? He doesn't know how to respond to emotion. And, and if that's the common setup of like the black male narrative, then what that teaches women is to not have. Because I'm not going to get the response. So that's not resilience? It's, that's trauma. Yeah, that's trauma. That's <laughs> yeah. not right. Not trying to figure out. Like, no, I mean, right, we all develop resilience. Say, that is the black experience. But it's, it's trauma, and you're not being taught how to process it. I'm going to pause you because you've been tripping. Um, <laughs> but, but Kelly went, oh, I didn't mean to say my student's name, but he don't care. It's a whole poem on YouTube about him. Um, when his mom passed, that was trauma. Him saying, like, I'm good, I was like, yo, you're not good. You're used to experiencing trauma, so your body no longer recognizes that that's what you're experiencing. But you're not good, and then decades down the line, that shit manifests when you're doing crazy things because you have all of this, like, negative energy in you that you didn't process. And nobody told you to process. They said, carry that shit. You good. Put it on your back. And that's kind of like what he was saying about unpacking. So ultimately, like, you never unpack, and all it is is, like, a bottle. And then some people, like, get this, get, get an outlet in writing, right? Some people get introduced to other art platforms, or, like, they get mentors, but everybody doesn't have that. And so what everyone else has is that, like, bootstrap backpack mentality, and that's why everybody's doing bad and stuck. Because nobody is saying, like, yo, but actually, processing your shit matters. Mental health matters. And so, so you don't think I'm good, I'm good, it's like a coping mechanism? <clears throat> like that can help. Like I feel like it's resilience too, home. but I do understand. Because I, I know, I mean, because I know, I know. Like when I lost, when I lost, like, like I lost a sibling, and then my sibling lost a sibling that wasn't related to me. But like this is like two people that was really close to me on top of my grandmother that all died for like one and a half years, and that shit was fucking like my head was spinning. But if I didn't tell myself I was good. And people didn't say, oh, you're going to be straight around me. Like, I don't feel like I would have got through that. Like, I don't, I just don't really understand how to say it in a you, different way. You can way. do all of that and still say, I'm yeah. good. And people can tell you you're going to be good. But it's, it's the difference in saying, yo, do you going to be straight? You are going to be straight, duh. And saying, like, suck that shit up. I think those are so two that's the thin things. line. I think that's I the, think thin, those are two different the thin line. Things. The thin line one is, is you're going to be good. One is negating your feelings. I get it. I get it. I get exactly what you're saying. Because at first I'm like, I feel like it's the same. Because like if, if something happened, like I said, if something go down with me, if, 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 if a situation occurred right now, hypothetically, the worst thing that could happen, I get put out. Right? That's the worst thing that could ever happen to me right now. I would be like, you know what? I'm good. Is it's going to be good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to be all right. Yeah, so do you not have to suck it up? Like, you I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'm sucking it up. Like, for it's me to say that, it's right. sucking it up. But if you also want to be pissed or blown because you got kicked out, then have that. But, and when I say that, hold up. Good till we not. But I say that to say, I say that to say, cause it's fine, bro. We not. I say that to say, I say that to say, Life, get life, right? Doesn't give you time to be upset. Life doesn't give you time to cry because you don't give you time to be upset. My time is what I make of it, and if I need a second, damn it, I need a second in the world. And, and what I say, when I say, I say it to say, right, hypothetically, right, and maybe it, it might be a man. No, nurturing is great, but everybody don't got nurture. Like I ain't had no nurture. Everybody don't got nurture. Not even that. Not even that. If, if let's say, I, I, everybody don't got that. But I say this. So because, I say, so because, so because you didn't have it, are you trying to act like that shit isn't a necessity for a lot of people? No. What I'm saying is that. Sometimes in this world, the way it's structured and the way it's set up, sometimes your word, which both of y'all said the sermon, sometimes you gotta be cold and that's a skill or that's some shit. Yeah, mm. The same way I'm telling you it's okay to like cry or it's okay to, to feel hurt and to feel pain, is the same way it's okay to be like, yo, I just don't care. I feel like that's I the first time you, you've actually said it. This yeah, time yeah, said it like that. It's okay for all of that. Like, yeah, like, yo, like you literally I, been no, saying I said, so I said, I said what I said because you. Like when I, you was raised to I not do this, to not do that, to not do that. And my mom, I'm like, yo, these are everything he's saying that he was raised to be in a bad way. These are things that we also need. That helps on top us. of what you're saying. Y'all just wasn't listening. That's what I was saying. I was saying that that you were saying I was raised to be cold and I was raised to be this and that. And, he's and, that and, I feel, and I'm saying sometimes and the way this shit is set up in a place where as a, a black motherfucker with a certain type of name, you don't get a call back for a job. You need that type of mentality. But, but I feel like, like what you're ignoring, but I feel like what you're ignoring is the fact that I said, like, look, this is my natural inclination. Right. But we're right trying to now, get to the other side. I'm trying to raise my daughters to know a different type of man as a man for my son to understand kids, a different type but of But it's not even about kids. I, that's why I said like... Just, kids, kids are not. Kids, kids was just... Made, yeah, yeah. Kids, kids was just made me realize... I get, I get what both of y'all saying. Y'all basically you know, saying the same thing. That's why... That's why I was... I know that this is being filmed. That's why we need you. I know when you have somebody that says like, all right, like... Like, 
You didn't want the to one dimensional behind thing. Behind yeah, the one dimensional thing was my was my problem. I don't want people to think that it's all right just to feel like this being hard shit is it all the time. All right, but if I, slap, if I slap this shit out you right now, you're not going to give me a hug and say it's going to kill me. <laughs> you're going you to fuck me. After That's I what I'm you saying. So it's bullshit. 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 No, no. So it's bullshit because your first reaction is to respond in the yeah. same negative way. Did so I say that I've gotten there yet or that I'm working towards yeah. this point? That's what I'm yeah. saying. But that's what I'm saying, though. No. That's the point of the sermon, too. So. <laughs> like, yo, like, like, that's what I'm like. No, yo. But he know me. He know where I live at. He know people in my family. He knows that it's only going to go over so far. Exactly. So why can't you just grab me right, stronger right, than me? Right. So why can't he grab me and say, yo, I know you Because if I, that, if I do that, if I do that, bro, because if I do that, the next time you get drunk, you're going to think that you can get away with doing it again. So I'm going to knock your ass out. You try to be soft for your daughters. You, <laughs> you try to be soft for your daughters. Every time you got to do something positive. <laughs> you try to be soft for your daughters. No, no, you know no. what I mean? Like, you try to be soft for his daughters. Ain't man. not more soft than the father to get the shit slapped out of him. That's, <laughs> that's the softest shit you can be. That's the softest shit you can be as a father to get the shit slapped out of him. No, so please. if you want to be a good father, if you want to be a good father, <laughs> you want to be a good father, <laughs> <laughs> if I want to be a good father, I should all the rest of the hair off this nigga head right now. Hey, that's a bad father. That's a bad father. Hey, get that on the table. We got, we got, we got. No, but yo.